So Andy from House Industries um, came by Heath and took a tour, and he was really interested in the work Heath was doing. And so we started talking about doing something together because I really admire their work too, and um, they do amazing stuff even beyond the, the um, type work that they do. They always kind of take their type and make them into interesting products, and they kind of just... Um, you know, it just becomes a very interesting creative process on where the type goes to. So it became a pretty um, obvious and I, we thought really good idea to take um, typeface and put it into clay and um, it would be um, a great way to number your house. We ended up with two different typefaces that we wanted to use and um, the Neutra typeface, which is a really classic typeface, and it's, it's done in some other materials for homes, but um, it, it's just a really classic, obvious, modern typeface and it worked out really nicely in, the, in, in clay. Um, really clean, simple typeface. And then at the same time, um, as we started talking, they were, um, House was, in, was introducing Eames typeface, and the Eames typeface was something they had created pretty much from scratch, inspired by the Eameses. So um, it was a great match, I thought, for Heath, because um, the Eameses and the Heaths were working at the same time, they shared a lot of philosophy, so there was just a lot of great tie-in, as well as the design for the typeface um, was this kind of stencil look, and it, it turned out very nicely in clay. It was very interesting kind of spatial shapes that it formed and um, it's just a really good translation into clay. And we um, we end up doing more colors in the eames too. It's a little bit more playful. Um, it's a little more of a statement I think to put these kind of numbers in an installation or on your house than the more traditional Neutra. So it, it was a pretty big challenge to get this very precisely designed typeface from 2D into um, our medium, which is clay and, and three-dimensional, obviously. But the, um, the clay has um, a lot of variation, and as you make things out of the clay, it doesn't always do exactly what you want it to do. It's not, um, you know, it's not Illustrator, and you can't move points around. So. Um, we had to make very precise molds. We had to get mo machined models first that really um, were a translation of the flat typeface. And then we had to design the, the type three-dimensionally. You know, how does it transition into the, into the base and what are all those the radii around the number. So there's some design work in just getting it into 3D. And then we had to make sure our molds were so were precise enough that um, it was all, all translating. And, um, and then going through the process of making the tiles, there's a lot of things that um, were done differently and are, and are um, more important than in making some of the other things that we make. So when we um, glaze these tiles, we need to wipe off the glaze on the surface. And when you wipe that off, it's a, it's a pretty meticulous process. We wipe it off on a um, kind of a sponge-like belt. And, um, but it's a, it's a very hand labor intensive process. There's no machine that does it. And that means when your hand moves a little bit this way or that way, you know, you, have the, you could potentially kind of ruin the whole piece. Um, and the glazing of it as well is really um, important. You've got a three dimensional form, so, and you don't have a machine glazing this, you have a hand. So making sure that you're getting the glaze not too heavy, not too light, and all those little details um, is what makes it look like we want it to look in the end.